Well, hello and welcome. This is part four of my 1900-1923 pound for pound ratings. So basically, um, this part, one more part after this, which will of course have four years um, and not five. Uh, this is the like penultimate video. Um, now, like I said um, on a prior video, once these five parts are finished, they are going on their own playlist. Um, pound pound ratings 1900 to present after which I will delete the old playlist um, and carry on on this playlist from where I leave this one 1923 with the 1924 ratings going forward so that's what I will do there um, so basically um, they will all follow on from 1900 through to the modern time so let us crack on now okay with these ratings these five years a similar tale to the last five years, just with different names. Three fighters split the lot. So in 1915, okay, the pound for pound top 10 rated fighters in my unique ratings. In 10th place, the Welsh wizard, Freddie Welsh. 9th place, okay, Willie Ritchie scores top 10. And in 8th place, Battling Levinsky scores his latest finish. In 7th place, the boxing marvel, Jack Britton, again scores highly. Um, while in 6th place, the featherweight king um, of nearly um, 12 years, um, Johnny Kilbane, again scores highly. In 5th place is the capable Mike Glover. While in 4th place, okay, the Scotch Wop, Johnny Dundee, scores again top 10 pound for pound. Now, a fighter very, very dominant almost in the last five years, um, scoring very highly. In third place, the giant slayer Jack Dillon again scores very highly. And in second place, okay, the Australian middleweight fighter, well, actually fought well below middleweight, um, Les Darcy um, gains top three finish. But the number one rated pound for pound fighter in 1953 is the UK's very own, the great Ted Kid Lewis. So Ted Kid Lewis tops the pound for pound list in 1915 now fighters who came very close there were a number of them one of them was eddie mcgorty another was jerome jeffords aka jeff smith um, and another was leo florian hook the excellent leo hook harry wills and sam mcveigh two heavyweight hall of famers um, opponents of rivals of sam langford um, almost also got in as did the ghetto wizard benny leonard so they are the pound pound ratings for 1915 on this next to last video. So I already have some other videos when this playlist is finished. I'm also going to be doing some more modern centric videos as well um, as I look at a few topics going forward. I've also got my top 10 featherweights of all time. I need to finish that uh, eight video playlist off as well over the coming month or so. So let's leave 1915. Ted Kid Lewis tops that bunch. Let us now go into 1916 and see how it changes. So in 1916, okay, Les Darcy still gains a top 10 pound for pound finish, dropping from third but still coming in the top 10 fighters. In ninth place, the Black Panther, Harry Wills, um, finishes top 10 um, after narrowly missing out last year. In eighth place, last year's number one, Ted Kid Lewis again scores top 10. And another Thunderbolt, okay, Billy Misk, the light heavyweight and heavyweight contender, Hall of Famer, scores seventh. The Welsh wizard, Freddie Welsh, um, again, scores another high ranking this year as the sixth best fighter pound for pound. While in fifth place, okay, the excellent battling Levinsky again scores highly. The Hussier Bearcat, Jack Dillon, again gains a strong finish. Jack Dillon has been very consistent um, in, from the last video and into this one, scoring top 10 pound for pound pretty much every year. While the top three this year, okay, in third place, the Scotch Wop, Johnny Dundee, finishes very highly. And the Boston Bone Crusher, Sam Langford, um, who's dropped from recent ratings, comes back in with a vengeance with a massive 1916 um, in terms of activity, um, coming second pound for pound as well. But the number one pound for pound rated fighter in 1916 is the great rival of Ted Kid Lewis, the three-time lineal welterweight champion, the boxing marvel Jack Britton. So, Jack Britton tops 1916, okay, ahead of his rival from who topped last year, Ted Kid Lewis. 1916 also saw a whole number of fighters nearly getting in. Um, you know, one of them um, was Harry, <coughs> not Harry Will, sorry, Mike Gibbons, um, the middleweight. Another was Benny Leonard. Another two fighters who came close, one was Mike O'Dowd, one was Mike Mateague. Kid Williams also made a good effort, as did Jimmy Wilde. Rocky Kansas and Johnny Kilbane also came quite close. And another fighter who came quite close, ominously, okay, is the rising contender, Harry Greb, the Pittsburgh windmill who came close in 1916. 
So leaving 1916 into 1917, okay, we have another top 10 here now. In 10th place, um, a fighter regarded for many decades as possibly the greatest southpaw of all time, rival of Benny Leonard, Lou Tenderler. Pete Kid Herman, okay, scores highly this year, um, coming in ninth place. And former light heavyweight lineal champion Bartlin Levinsky again scores a top 10 finish. Sam Langford, who finished second last year, still gains top 10 finish, coming in at a lower placed seventh. While in sixth place, the Scotch Wop Johnny Dundee um, again scores a top 10 finish. Last year's number one pound pound rated fighter, the boxing marvel Jack Graton, again scores a top five finish um, at fifth place. And Mike O'Dowd, okay, a fighter who beat Adi Greb and uh, wouldn't fight Adi Greb in the rematch um, after gaining the win, finishes fourth. But he was a great fighter himself with a fantastically underrated resume. In third place, the aforementioned Adi Greb. The Pittsburgh windmill, who nearly got in last year, but 1917 does power up the pound pound ratings coming in third place. In second place, the ghetto wizard Benny Leonard, who is now, of course, the reigning lineal undisputed lightweight champion of the world, nearly gets the top spot. But in 1917, okay, the great rival of Jack Britton, the great UK fighter Ted Kid Lewis, um, following from 1915, he dropped off from the number one. He reinserts himself as the number one pound for pound rated fighter in 1917. So fighters who came close in 1907, one was Tommy Gibbons. Other fighters included Jeff Smith, um, Leo Hook, Billy Misk and Jack Dillon. Um, Rocky Kansas and Jimmy Clabby also came quite close, um, as did Mike Gibbons. Um, another fighter who came close in 1917 was the Black Panther, Harry Wills. So let us leave 1917 there, go on to 1918, year four of this five-year video. Um, and in 1918, um, in 10th place, okay, we have Leo Florian Hook. Um, in 9th place, we have um, light heavyweight to heavyweight contender and underrated fighter of his time, Tommy Gibbons, the brother of Mike Gibbons. And in 8th place, the Black Panther, Harry Wills, um, comes back into the top 10 pound-for-pound -pound rated fighters. Seventh place, the Scotch Wop Johnny Dundee again gains another top 10 finish. While in sixth place, okay, another rising name, the Manasseh Mauler, Jack Dempsey, the ferocious heavyweight king, um, comes in the top 10 for the first time. The ghetto wizard Benny Leonard um, again scores highly following from last year, coming in at fifth. While last year's number one, um, the great Ted Kid Lewis, finishes fourth. The great Southpaw Lou Tenderler um, comes in the top three at third. While the Pittsburgh windmill Harry Greb, okay, who um, appeared in last year's rating again, pushes up one more notch in 1918 to be the second rated pound for pound fighter in the world. But the number one this year, okay, um, swapping with his main rival over these first four years is the three time linear welterweight champion Jack Britton. So, some of the fighters who came quite close in 1918. Um, one of them was former light heavyweight champion Batalin Levinsky. And another was the underrated fighter Rocky Kansas, who has a stunning resume himself. Um, Billy Miss, the light heavyweight and heavyweight contender, um, Hall of Famer, um, also barely missed out. Um, as did lowweight fighter and champion Joe Lynch. So 1918 is the next to last year, and we have one more year in 1919. And 1919, um, following on from 1918, 1919 was won on a landslide, um, you know, by one fighter. We will jump to that in a second. But Ted Kid Lewis and Jack Britton have done very well, you know, showing themselves to be top-rated pound-for-pound fighters. So let's go to the last year of this video, 1919, um, and the top 10 pound-for-pound -pound rated fighters in 1919. In 10th place, we have the excellent middleweight fighter, Hall of Famer Mike Gibbons. P. Kid Herman again scores top 10, um, sneaking in the lower end at 9th. And the Southpaw, Lou Tenderler, again gains a top 10 finish, coming in at 8th. The Black Panther, Harry Wills, great rival of Sam Langford, again scores top 10, coming in at 7th. And the great Jeff Smith um, gains his latest top 10 entry at 6th. The excellent former middleweight champion Mike O'Dowd um, comes in the top five at fifth place. And in fourth place, okay, the Scotch Wop Johnny Dundee again for consistent years now. He's top ten rated pound for pound um, coming in at fourth. 
But the top three rated pound for pound fighters in 1919 in third place, the ghetto wizard Benny Leonard, who is also becoming very consistent around that top five area, comes in third. And last year's number one, the boxing marvel Jack Britton, nearly got the number one spot, um, but was smashed out of it by the old conquering fighter this year, who is the Pittsburgh windmill Harry Greb, who was the absolute universal pound for pound number one rated fighter in 1919. So fighters who came close in 1919, okay, one of them was Battling Levinsky, um, a rival of Greb. Another was Willie Ritchie. Flyweight puncher Jimmy Wilde, okay, came very, very close to getting in, as did lowweight fighter um, Joe Lynch, who now for the second year on the trot was close to getting in. The last fighter close to getting in, really, um, was Johnny Kilbain, who... Took over from um, A. Battelle in the early 1910s and he's still um, the lineal featherweight champion of the world. So there is the end of video four. After this video there is one more video to go um, at which point I can then put all of these videos from the 1900, 1923 and the others into one playlist. Part five coming tomorrow. I'm out for now.